Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch. And over the years, I've covered a ton of programming tools here, but today we're gonna to talk about one of the OGs. Actually, we're gonna talk about the great, great grandchild of one of the OGs, and that is a program called VI. Now, VI, I believe it stood for Visual back in the day. Uh, this is actually Vim that you're seeing running here. And this is installed by default on Mac OS on pretty much every Linux install you've ever heard of. You can get it running on Windows. You can get it on any platform you desire. In fact, I believe Vim was originally developed either on the Amiga or the ST. Now, VI was first created back in 1976. Uh, fun fact, by a guy named Bill Joy who went on to develop or to create Sun Microsystems. Uh, and it is, in a nutshell, a text editor. There were originally two major text editors. There was VI. This is VI. And then you also have uh, Emacs. And it was sort of like having a Svelte text editor versus an IDE back in the day. Now, that's been a holy war that's gone on forever. Today, we're not talking about Emacs. We're talking about VI. Now, more specifically, we're actually talking about the VI children. So Vim is designed and backward compatible, pretty much uses the same keyboard shortcuts and commands as um VI did. And then on top of that, more modernly, now again, we're talking Vim is like a 30 year old program. And now we're talking about more like a 15 or a 20 year old program is another one called N Vim also stands for Neo Vim. Now you're going to notice they look almost identical. And basically, uh, as a user, they pretty much are. Now there's a lot of things in Neo Vim that aren't in Vim, things like a built in terminal emulator. Um, and the idea behind Neo Vim is that it can actually be extended. And that's another thing that we're going to see today is I check out down here, this is something called Vim Er. So they're all in the same family. They all use the keyboard shortcuts. This one is a Mac OS specific version built on top of Neo Vim. Yeah, I know it gets confusing. Now the question is, why would I want to use something like Vi or sorry, Vi, Vim, Neo Vim, or a uh, extended version such as Vimmer here in this day and age? Well, this program has been around since 1976, and that means it's had a lot of times to uh, let's say refine the experience. Now it doesn't seem intuitive at all. So when you first greet it here, you press I to go into insert mode, and I can start typing. I can start typing. Now, if I hit escape, I'm instead in reader mode. And you see here, I now have keyboard access. Now I'm not gonna be demonstrating VI uh, that much just simply because I haven't really used this for years. All of the commands are lost on me at this point in time. But once you get familiar with the commands, this is a very keyboard focused approach. In fact, um, it basically VI started before the mouse was ubiquitous. So uh, if you want to, and you're willing to invest time in learning the keyboard shortcuts, it can be huge quick. There's no reaching for a mouse. You can do copy 16 lines of text, copy them over, convert everything. Like there is an entire um, meta language basically in the keyboard shortcuts. On top of that, there is actually a programming language uh, called um, VimScript, which is used for writing extensions. And then on top of that, NeoVim also has a Lua based extension language option as well. Now to understand exactly what you're dealing with in terms of these commands, um, to escape out without saving, I go escape and I type shift and colon to bring up the command you'll see down here. And then I'm gonna do a Q exclamation mark. That is how you can quit your program without saving. So yeah, there is a learning curve when it comes to Vim. Now these are all about, it's a generalized text editor. Here we are now in Vim Er. The only difference between Vim Er for the most part and NeoVim, which is based on, is this is an application. So what you're gonna notice here is when I've got it running, I can do drag and drop into it. I have traditional menu support and so on. So everything else ran uh, in a terminal environment. This is more of an application with what that entails. But otherwise, same program here, same shortcut. So for example, I can go here, shift colon, and I'm gonna say syntax on. And now I'm getting code syntaxing automatically. This can all be done and extended with a ton of extensions. We'll see where the extension options are out there. Uh, and then at the same time, I could do something like uh, shift colon color. So I'm gonna do color scheme, but I could do color, so C-O-L-O, -O, and then I'm gonna do a tab. And you'll see it, do, it does an auto completion. And space, and then a tab again. And I can pick my various different options here. So I'm gonna do peach puff. I think it was peach puff. There you go. So there is how you can change the syntax highlighting. There's also, again, in any file you can set to automatically configure all this stuff when you launch it and so on. But this is a highly extensible, but extremely um, streamlined text editing environment that has been used for coders for 
four plus decades now. So there is definitely something to it. But again, the other thing that is to it is the massive learning curve. So if you want to this day and age, there are actually, a, a, again, if you come to a Mac and you type VI, it'll work. You're gonna get Vim in this case. A lot of times you get the same thing on Linux as well, but VI is still being updated today. Vim is still being updated today. Uh, by the way, it's, I think Vim is by a single developer that controls everything. So it's more of a singular focus in what it is. And then you got NeoVim, which has more of a community behind it. So it'll have probably more experimental features added to it over time. NeoVim is our jumping off point. I think if you wanna start learning VI uh, for coding today, uh, NeoVim probably has the biggest community, either Vim or NeoVim, or again, uh, this is hyper extensible. So there are a number of uh, tools that were built on top of NeoVim, like we saw with Vimmer there, which got another options there. So um, GUIs, IDEs, web browsers, etc., can embed NeoVim as an editor or a script host. So that's the entire idea behind NeoVim. It's basically, a UI. you can use it as an editor as is, but you can also embed it in other tools, which is why we have a number of different application versions of it. So if you're not working uh, in a terminal environment, you'd rather have a traditional, more like Visual Studio Code type of experience. There are a number of options we're gonna see in just a second. There's other things about it. Again, it has a Lua-based uh, extension system, but it also supports uh, Vim script and Vim's editing model here. So if you learned Vim or you learned VI, you're gonna be good to go with any of these tools for the most part. They all use a very similar syntax. Another thing about NeoVim is that it runs uh, plugins as co-processes, which makes it so that you can run uh, plugins asynchronously and safely. Uh, kind of another big difference between the uh, earlier versions and NeoVim itself. Now I'm not gonna weigh in with which version you should use. Just know that people use Vim, people use NeoVim, and people use tools built on top of NeoVim. And also people use something like Visual Studio Code with a Vim uh, coding compatibility layer, which is also another option out there. Uh, so if you wanna go the uh, GUI route built on on top of NeoVim, uh, we saw uh, Vimmer in action earlier on in this example. So this here, this is Vimmer. Again, it, it's just an appified version. So instead of running in a terminal, it's got um, rendering GUI here. You've got some more advanced features like a markdown preview tool over here. It still supports all of the same plugins that you would get and work with in uh, NeoVim, which generally are also supported in Vim, although NeoVim has its own extension language as well. But if you use Vim script to do your extension, or VI script to do extensions, they will run in all of these different versions, by the way. So you're not really gonna make a right or a wrong choice. Um, so v Vimmer is a good option if you are on Mac OS. However, you are not limited there. There are a ton of recommendations. There are 18 uh, repositories here in, in this um, list for some of the more popular IDEs, IDEs out there. So we got things like Oni, NeoVide, Vimmer, which is what the one we saw there, VS Code NeoVim, um, Gano Vim, uh, Vim, whatever. So there are a, an absolute ton of different options out there uh, with varying degrees of support. Again, NeoVim was designed to be uh, embedded in other development tools. So uh, people have run with that. Also, if you're developing your own tool and you wanna have text editing built into it or script editing built into it, NeoVim is definitely one of the things you could consider. Uh, I mentioned earlier on learning Vim. This is why I'm not giving you a ton of demonstration. The last time I used Vim in like a professional capacity was, oh, many, many moons ago. So I don't really remember anything, uh, but you have a ton of power here. You can create multiple buffers. You can say, all right, select these next seven lines, copy them, repeat them five times, stuff like that. And here is your command set. Uh, learning these commands is nuts absolutely nuts. Uh, but once you have learned them and you get the muscle memory, you will find that using any other tool, especially every time you're using something, say like uh, Visual Studio and you have to reach for a mouse, you're going to go, oh, this sucks. So it's one of those things. It could take you probably two or three months to get the muscle memory to really find Vim comfortable. But I think once you've done that, any of the VI family of um, of editors or the the, the, the the text format. So even if you use something like these things inside of Visual Studio Code, once you get used to these keyboard settings, especially if you're doing just a lot of raw text editing, 
uh, you are going to find it very hard to go back. Now, another key aspect about VI going back to the very, very, very beginning, and one of those things that kind of was one of those original arguments that Emacs was all singing, all dancing, had an embedded version of Lisp. It could do tons and tons of things, but it was like many times bigger than VI. But to make them do the same thing, VI you added a bunch of add-ons to, ultimately made it as big or bigger than an Emacs install. Now, there's two different approaches to it. Uh, and again, I'm not going back into that holy war, but one of those things that made VI very useful was the plugin and extensibility. So out of the box, it may not do a ton, especially compared to other editors, but you will find there are tools for doing everything. Also, you're going to find Vim tools for just about every single programming language out there. Um, so this uh, Vim Awesome is a good repository of plugins out there. If you're wondering like, okay, well, how many plugins are we talking about here? Uh, we're talking about uh, 19,462 plugins. So uh, if you are using Vim or NeoVim, these should all work for you. And you can basically turn this, uh, I won't say simple text editor, but the streamlined text editor into a full-blown IDE, however you wish. Um, and I think you will find that majority of the extended versions of NeoVim will also be fully backward compatible with all of these tools as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is that. If you're going to jump in, if you want to kind of get a taste for it, because keep in mind, this has been in development since 1976, and people still use VI or one of VI's grandchildren or great-great-grandchildren on a daily basis in a professional environment. There's a reason behind that. And it again, if you're typing code all the time or you're just typing in general all the time, editing text is your world, it is worth it to invest the time into these tools because you will find that you become faster, you, you mind meld with your tool. Uh, I'm too occasional now, which is why I don't even try. Uh, but if, if again, coding is your life and you're wondering why these people continue to use a tool for 40 plus years, it's because it works. And NeoVim is probably where you'd want to jump off. Now, again, people use Vim, people use NeoVim. Uh, I think probably a fairly even split between those two communities. But if you are starting today, NeoVim is probably the way to go. But again, I'm just kind of showing you the tools that are out there. I don't use any of these on a daily basis. I basically only ever use Vim when I'm doing like a Linux install and I need to configure, like edit some kind of config file. That's about the extent of my competency these days. But it is a tool... Uh, uh, on a programming oriented channel, I should definitely cover at some point in time. And today is that point in time. So let me know what you think. Do you use VI or any of its children? If so, why? If not, why not? Let me know. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.